Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Radich. Uh, good afternoon. How, how far did you guys travel from? Indiana. Indiana, all right. Uh, you guys? Tennessee. Tennessee? That's far. It's good. Some vacation at the beach. All right. So how many first time uh, at Code on the Beach? OK. How many repeat it? So you brought some people with you. I love it. That's, that's how it grows. That's, that's how community grows and everything. So uh, good afternoon. My name is Mark Radich. Uh, I'm a senior developer. I'm a consultant. And I run two user groups here locally. I'm uh, originally from Poland. I lived in different countries in Germany, Canada. So uh, I speak seven languages. So I might, you, you might be thrown on. Is that southern accent? Yes, it's southern accent from southern Poland. So, <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's, so for about three years, I'm running um, Microsoft Developer User Group JAX and NFL XUG, North Florida Xamarin User Group. Uh, it's the first uh, user group in Florida. It started three years ago. And I'm also Xamarin MVP, uh, certified, certifiable, quote unquote. So. <laughs> Uh, so just, I have a, let's see how this goes. Oh, I have this slide. I always like to, to, uh, to put that out there. Um, uh, so th this, this is me here on the motorcycle. I had an accident about seven years ago. Yeah, it's, it was July, seven years ago. And I was one kind of through, uh, time that I, I burned out with software development. And uh, um, I would like to point that out to you guys just for a few minutes. Live the life you love, love the life you live. If you're miserable in development, you know, maybe go, like I was trying to do day trading, network marketing, it was mild success. And, uh, but that was never so much fun as development. So I got burned out. It turned out that I was just working long hours. And uh, if you work long hours, especially full time, your employees will, employers will take everything you give them for free. And then you don't have anything left for family. Um, you just, so if you try to keep har harmony, that's what I found out works the best. Uh, make sure your priorities are right. Uh, this is my family on the left, uh, is my three kids and my wife. Yeah, uh, this Tuesday, next week, will be 30 years uh, of uh, anniversary. So that's my high school sweetheart. Here below, I uh, was uh, at uh, just a couple of just different fun pictures. This was uh, last um, Evolve in Orlando. Um, met with all the uh, leaders, and it's really, really cool how low-key. And uh, yeah, I was uh, awarded MVP, uh, Xamarin MVP this year. So just... Just to bring that out, you know, maybe you, you'd be a great day trader or help other people manage their finances or something. Just think about that. You know, you catch yourself day trading during work hours and stuff, you know, frustrated out of your mind. Uh, not going to work for a long time. So, uh, so just, uh, just a little thing. I think it's just worth to remind. I, you know, once I uh, changed my priorities, I, I wanted to be known as... Uh, I've, been, I've been doing development for about 25 years, 10 years in .NET, and recently in uh, uh, iOS and Android, and uh, uh, four years in Xamarin, mostly uh, 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 enterprise development. And uh, so I, I used to want to be known as geek, and then husband and father and stuff. That didn't work. So uh, once I flipped that, and now I'm hashtag husband, father, lifelong mate, then geek, okay? So once you get your life more in harmony with work and, uh, you know, get out there, do something fun. I like surfing, maybe riding a bike or any, something outside, away from the monitor. You're going to be happier as a developer or as a professional, as an, you know, you can become expert that way. And then your family is around you, you know, and, you get farther down in life, you, you will value family and connection and people that love you more than just 
grinding the code and polishing the code and running all your tests and everything that it's nobody moved my brackets, you know, and stuff like that kind of thing. <laughs> so, so just, just this, and I found out, I mean, my last seven trips around the sun is just fun time and, uh, and I love it. And I noticed your rates will go up too, so it's, it, it pays up, so any way around. So today we're going to talk about uh, uh, Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, and uh, we're going to talk about MVVM and mod what is model view. Something is not working with my clicker. Hold on. Keep clicking and nothing is moving. All right, so let's, how about this? There you go. Uh, I mentioned a little bit about testing and uh, MVVM, other p patterns, and then we'll go s through some code samples. Um, so f first of all, how many of you are using Xamarin right now? Okay, well good, I have a couple of slides for like if, in, uh, how about uh, .NET developer, C Sharp? Awesome, I'm in the right place, okay. And uh, how many people have uh, background with XAML, maybe like uh, WPF or something like this. Oh my gosh, that's for you, man. You guys gonna love it. So, um, so, so, so let's start. Basically, uh, I, I've, been, I've been developing in Xamarin Forms for a good two years right now. Uh, since, actually I started with 1.0. Uh, it was a project for uh, Jackson Hewitt Tax Software. Once they found out it was 1.0, like, Get this out of here. We don't allow anything 1.0. It looks good. It costs you half the money. And uh, we changed. Now I think they're got, uh, they have uh, back forms back in that. But uh, it, we, it was ups and downs. It's getting better and better. With 2.0 release, we have way more things uh, available to, to, uh, to write cool code and fast apps. So. Uh, Xamarin Forms is a new set of APIs. It's basically a set of APIs that will allow you quickly uh, and uh, quite easy, especially if you have XAML background. Uh, uh, and then you have shared user interface besides shared code. So Xamarin from the beginning was uh, promoting shared code and, uh, and then uh, you had to write your own APIs. Uh, there were uh, the mono dialogue libraries that will allow rudimentary things, but really rich APIs was more with this. So, uh, very powerful abstractions. Th this allows you, this is the shared code piece. Um, uh, there's very uh, uh, many plugins written for Xamarin right now that could be distributed, that are distributed through NuGet packages. And, uh, Here's one of them, it's text-to-speech by James Montemagno. Uh, what this allows us to uh, abstract the, you know, uh, Apple's iOS AV speech synthesizer, uh, Android text-to-speech, and then a Cortana speech synthesizer on Windows platform. So, so all you're gonna have an interface and just say speak, and then the NuGet will uh, on, the, on the appropriate uh, platform that you launched it will run. Uh, so we have a common mobile API and then uh, that will talk to uh, correct speech API, correct a a camera API settings, connectivity, SMS, locations. These are available right now and then uh, and then it will, these will talk to platform native APIs. So this kind of gives you a little bit more overview of Xamarin. Uh, this, this, this is, uh, there's two ways of really writing apps. So with, na and we always, it compiles to native code, so we always have a native performance with apps. But there is, there really, there is no compromise on performance. Uh, we had some, tests in the early days, like actually about four years ago, before iOS, uh, um, Objective-C 6.0 introduced uh, reference counting, actually C Sharp run cleaner. Of course it was less code than Objective-C, but it did run cleaner with uh, uh, being modern language and uh, uh, 
memory management, how it was done. So, so here uh, you can have all the uh, .NET uh, libraries, and uh, then we have you know using C sharp and uh, bindings. So ahead of time compiling, and then uh, compiles into app and runs on on the iPhone, and uh, here, and this is. And this is on Android. Basically, Android will compile an APK. So, so this is how it works. You throw C sharp on there, <laughs> and then apps come out and not the other side. This is all the uh, GIF that I, I snugged from Xamarin's side. So basically, that's when your employer looks at it, man, that's how you do it, C sharp, and then the app comes out on the other side. And uh, <laughs> so, so uh, with Xamarin Forms, we are we, we it will not, Xamarin Forms enables you to be highly productive, share your code, and also build the UI, uh, UI if you want to specific on on uh, on, on platforms. Uh, so so the one like I said, two ways of building that. It will have shared backend code, and then you will write your own UI. And this will, you can actually uh, do, uh, use uh, Xcode designer uh, to, to design uh, your UI or separate pages. And well, then on this, uh, in Android as well, your entire UI is designed separately in phone windows but you sharing uh, C-sharp backend. So this is the traditional Xamarin approach. That's the original. The, with Xamarin Forms, um, allows us shared UI and very, sometimes almost none uh, UI in uh, code that it's uh, specific for the platform. It depends if you designing rich, user rich, uh, with Xamarin Forms it became really quite sophisticated as right now. But uh, it's still, there's still, uh, like if it's like really, really uh, uh, high-end, uh, maybe rich apps, then you can, it allows you to create se se separate pages in uh, UI specific, maybe the UI behavior on iOS different, maybe uh, on Android that, you know, you want to pre present to your users, and Windows, uh, there's still no tiles in, on any other uh, platform, so, if you're taking advantage of that, you would have to address that on your uh, separate um, UI logic. But most of the uh, shared UI code, and I'm going to present this today uh, with Xamarin Forms. That's what I've been using. All the enterprise apps that I've been working on just released recently for an uh, app for United Health, and uh, it's all uh, Xamarin Forms. We have very few renders uh, that platform specific. Um, so you can start with with native, and then maybe transform some code to forms if it makes sense. And uh, or you can start with forms. This actually that's what I used from the beginning. I would use as the prototyping tool, and I would just uh, craft out the code. And then once we des designers or somebody else requested specific functionality or controls, uh, then we use that. Uh, so it's, it's just way more than just a framework. It includes everything you need uh, to get up and running to build full native application. Now, if you used uh, MVVM type development before, you, you'll be right at home, especially with, with XAMO or WPF. Uh, it is a paradigm shift, I would say. You know, so Xamarin Forms now uh, have 40 plus pages, layouts and controls um, that are built from code behind or XAML. You can actually do code behind or XAML, and, uh, uh, or you can mix and match. So it's really, uh, it supports two-way data binding, uh, supports navigation, animation API, dependency service, messaging center. So it's, uh, it's, it's really equips you to, uh, to be really productive. And uh, I, I can tell you, we, uh, work, we focus on one platform, then we uh, address all the issue, like if 
Uh, I work right now they on the iOS and Android. In the future, maybe Windows Phone once once the maybe the 10 gets released. It's a public facing, uh, and we didn't have many requests for Windows Phone at this moment. But uh, I'm going to leave that subject alone. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a little hurt, but you know, because I was Windows Phone diehard back back then. Uh, right now, I get carry iPhone, Android. I actually, you know, we're ag agnostic. You know, whoever whoever pays you more, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and uh, so so this is how it will look. Uh, this is XAML, for example, for the login page, and. Uh, Somehow the squig squigglies, oh yeah, I took a screenshot, that's why the squigglies there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, so you will see here, this is on iOS with white background, typical, which now iOS is adopting more, you know, changing colors ap apparently will be black uh, with the uh, uh, iOS 10 release um, standard. <laughs> it will mess up a lot of people writing custom <laughs> colors, so I'll tell you that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And this is Android, typical black background, and the, uh, Windows Phone with also typical black background. But you can see they're, they, they render differently. This is the same code in XAML, right? So that's how, uh, and then data binding for, for your uh, commands, and we'll talk about that briefly. And uh, uh, so each will exhibit and show native interface. Here's, uh, so basically, you, the, I think Xamarin has a, uh, like a, work, a worksheet or something to figure out what's, which approach is better for you. But this is, you know, um, Xamarin Forms is great for, for data, data entry, prototyping, like I said, uh, apps that require, um, you know, little platform specific functionality. Um, and then <coughs> where code sharing is more important than than uh, you know, some custom APIs. Uh, with uh, iOS, Android, and of course for Windows Phone, uh, you, you write uh, in, in Windows, um, with Windows Phone library, with the Windows 10 or uh, Windows 8. So, so you know, more interaction may be uh, when you start getting some functionality. I know there's uh, like a map, map API that was lacking <clears throat> At one point, I, I had to actually render uh, the pins and the dialog and then have a button from the dialog uh, for directions or something like this when it was requested. Actually, when I did the quote, they said, well, we'll go with the cheaper version. So, uh, but you have the option. And uh, depending how much you want to customize and, and such. So, so here are some uh, pages um, and uh, different layouts that are... Uh, ready to use, basically you just, um, so th this is set of pages, and uh, right, let me see. So something like a tabbed view, so it will create tabs <laughs> and uh, place icons for you. You can have uh, different, uh, different layouts that are supported right now uh, from XAML. So not everything that your custom from WPF is because this is XAML, uh, Xamarin flavor. But there's a lot of, well, yes, it's, it's just a markup language. So they adopted what, what made sense and then created renderers, basically. That's what it, they did behind the scenes. And uh, so th these are the, contr the controls available. And it's, uh, uh, it's just growing more and more. You know, like the activity indicator, box view, button, date picker, editor, you know, uh, entry, image. So, and basically you pick whatever you want. I, I, would, I, always, I used to go back to the sample app and see how the controls were used, what I want to use. And then uh, I was new to XAML. Uh, I, actually, the WPF bypassed me. I was more on the web, .NET, MVC, and... Uh, and then uh, once I saw what, what it could do, it was just amazing. But I would like, that's why I asked if somebody with WPF um, background, I had a contract in, in Arizona, and there was a couple guys, they were just wanted to start mobile practice. Uh, it was a big company, but a couple guys that are really seasoned with XAML, 
and these guys like black belt. And uh, so I just told them, hey, here's how I could do it. And man, you know, the, the things they're showing me, oh, you can do this, oh, you cannot do this. But uh, so basically, you just feel right at home once you, once you uh, start writing those pages. And now we have a, Jason, do you know, is it in beta, uh, the previewer, XAML previewer? Design? Uh, in alpha, I know it was it just there was just released last month, uh, and so that pushed everything up, yeah. and I, they they want so everybody's waiting for the uh, visuals like designer like uh, Windows has for Windows Phone, and it's not it will save you time uh, compiling, running, and viewing. But I could tell you it it, uh, it justifies using XAML, especially if you know how to do it. So here's some uh, ecosystem already available with controls. Um, Component one, DevExpress. I love using actually DevExpress Grid. Uh, I was using for one uh, customer. I think I have a screenshot here. Uh, and then uh, Infragistics has really cool Telerik. Syncfusion, uh, I'm using some charts, Syncfusion uh, uh, control. And uh, so, so out of the box, um, you can plug in. Many are free. Like I think Telerik controls are free now for Xamarin. And uh, DevExpress has a free portion. I think SyncFusion is free for, uh, for uh, private, and, and uh, companies have to pay a license. Uh, so you can easily extend and embed custom views, mix and match screens, uh, call native APIs. Any API call that is available on, on iOS or Android is available in Xamarin. So there is no uh, issues that, oh, you, I'm running in a browser, I cannot go reach out to something, or it's, uh, I cannot see. Every, every API call is available. And with the new release, usually, like iOS 10 will comes out, this it's uh, probably going to be announced next month, uh, within 24 hours, all of them are released and available. They usually it's available in alpha or beta, just like Ghost Peril. Android is totally different story. You know, they, they they usually will, you know, because the releases come out and you know, back and forth changes. But it's usually timely as well. Uh, without I, I never run into any significant issues when the OSs were released, and it's usually good, you know, as even Apple proved. It's a good, good thing to just wait until the next one comes out and a couple of weeks later, uh, after the, especially with thousands of APIs that they release and, and such. So, so let's talk about MVVM a little bit, and especially you guys, uh, XAML. So how many wrote in MVVM pattern or used? Okay, well, that's cool. So you guys are going to be, so I don't have to totally uh, do it from scratch. So. Uh, views is the same like in any other MVVM. Uh, it's actually, this C sharp code you can take and use it on the web if you have some C sharp that will be able to talk to other views that could consume and, and do it. You can reuse the view models. Uh, I haven't done it. Uh, but so, so views will represent different, different uh, you know, windows and user controls and how we present that using XAML or uh, whatever we choose. <clears throat> view models will uh, talk to views. Models will, uh, will be presented inside the view models. Sometimes it's a one-to-one -one relationship. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, it, they, they, the models will represent maybe JSON, maybe database, uh, maybe you have a SQLite database, you know, uh, and that. Is it possible to cut the AC a little bit down? This thing is blowing. <coughs> um, so, uh, so the what is the, the so let's start with the main principle. Introduce, uh, you know, it was uh, like uh, Martin Fowler said that to, uh, with the separation uh, separation presentation pattern. So. Uh, we want to make sure that the code that manipulates the views, which is the presentation, only uh, that the 
it manipulates only representation and pushes all the domain and data uh, source into clearly separated areas of program. That will allow us uh, good testability. The, now, we can have a modular uh, and uh, clearly separated code, but also uh, the, the, what we are after is for testable code. And uh, especially when the apps get complex and, uh, and you have automated testing available rather than push button testers, then, uh, then you want to be able to uh, you know, maybe have a part of your code check-in that will run your UI, it will run your uh, unit tests. And then maybe before it's published, you, you can run your UI tests that, you know, uh, and we'll talk about that briefly. So uh, there are two other patterns. I've, I've been used uh, MVP, uh, Model View Presenter, Model View Controller, and uh, that's what I've used before, uh, before mobile. And uh, that also strives through uh, separating the, the presentation path uh, and uh, uh, concerns. So MVVM is layered uh, that the, the separated presentation, and it was actually was made popular by XAML. Uh, that's how it came, you know, it was from Microsoft, right, uh, years ago. I, I forgot. Is, uh, uh, to, uh, to allow, um, you know, have a XAML code for uh, WPF or for the web or, you know, and then, uh, and that, that proven to be really good pattern for that could be used in mobile uh, development. So your UI is clearly uh, separated from the model and uh, it, it, the get and set properties and commands will link that to view model and it could notify uh, view model and then view model can have different uses from the model that comes maybe it's from uh, data services or maybe some web services maybe from JSON or, or whatever you decide and that actually allows you to switch different backends um, I was presenting uh, this app it's uh, for healthcare and uh, you know, I had a local database caching things, and uh, they come up, it's HIPAA compliant, we cannot store anything on the device, even if it's encrypted. So I was easy, it was easy for me to just to unhook and, okay, I'll just get the data from JSON, you know, live. So uh, just keeping the same models, basically. Uh, so that, that, uh, that's, that's great, you know, if you need to switch backends or maybe uh, different ways. Uh, you know, using Couch Database versus SQLite or anything, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't, doesn't bother you, you just switch and then get the data from there. So what is, let's talk about the model. So this is Model X. <laughs> uh, so, so models are intended to be shared across platforms. And uh, basically, n you should not include any platform specific features. I saw people, so for example, model as a, so let's look at some code here. Uh, can you guys see it okay? I got, I got magnifying gla glass. Uh, how about that? Is that big enough? <laughs> so uh, let's say it's an employee class and uh, we wanted to, you know, have some uh, ID, name, title, and then uh, uh, we can retrieve the employee by ID and update record. Now, some, so, so this, I believe, this is a little bit, it could be too much functionality in the model, but it's still okay. But like, as far as formatting strings or something, I wouldn't include that in the model. That would belong in view model. But let's talk about view. All right, let's go. So what is view? And view is... Uh, Platform specific, you know, uh, representation of your model, of view models. And uh, this, this, that's the app we just launched a couple of weeks ago for United, United Healthcare. And, uh, and actually, they wanted to have it 
same look on Android and iOS. They just want to have a uniform or that way um, as far as even color schemes. Uh, this, is, this is an app that I wrote for Timeshare Company and this is using the grid uh, from DevExpress. Very easy to use. And this is not the app uh, for a uh, network marketing company. They pay a lot of money for that one. That was uh, good, like a text messaging and sending different <coughs> info between VIPs. Uh, so platform specific info for the user will be presented in your view. Uh, everything vis visual, uh, fonts, colors, that's what's in the view. What is view model? This is view and there are models. No. <laughs> That's, uh, that's, uh, this is for my trip this year to uh, Europe. But uh, these are code monkeys. They'll help you. Actually, I have a couple for giveaways later. <laughs> and uh, so, so what are view models? Uh, so, so here, it's just like we had the employee. Yeah, come in here. So view model will have a models inside, and now, we can, uh, we can have a, a property, uh, I, I property notify, uh, I notify property change implemented. So now we can actually talk to view through view model. It's often one-to-one -one relationship uh, with the model and, uh, but, uh, but allow us to, allows us to, to test, oh, 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 come back, come back. like this. That's what allows us to inject maybe services if we use different, if we use a dependency injection pattern. Uh, that's what view model will allow us uh, to test models uh, separately without views. Um, that's how I look at it. Uh, so, view centric. Uh, Data. A anything that like the uh, the name changes, it will update our model, and bindable properties will th that that's will uh, that will allow us to move data from view to the model, and then maybe update database or whatever we want to do. Um, uh, another one is so here it can allow us to format strings or format uh, you know appropriate format. Uh, for the appropriate to the locale that we're in, uh, or country, or something like that, uh, you know, can do, you know do some decision, whatever we need to do, calculations on the data that we have, you know, we can uh, implement more info that we don't want to store in models. Uh, So here's another one, uh, it can uh, sort lists or return, you know, here's like active projects here. It's going to mess me up again. It's cool. It's too big. This is too big. So what is, uh, let's talk about a view model a little bit. Uh, more about, uh, you know, the uh, data validation, input validation, or, uh, you know, some more visual calculations and, and things that we need to perform. Um, often we, we will have multiple view models and uh, they will have a, data bindable entities and that, that are displayed and they will co uh, connect one to one with views. Uh, it could be one model, but uh, there'll be different view models for different view uh, or, or vice versa, we could use it to synchronize with our UIs. Um, yeah. So, in, in the view, um, in Xamarin, we usually, uh, 
inherit from content page, and then uh, that uh, that's uh, it needs to be initialized. It could be we can uh, expose binding context to our view model, and then uh, uh, that's how we set. Uh, we could have a main binding context as a main view model as well as uh, view models uh, for each view, uh, de de depending how you design. Um, although the view model is tied to, uh, to a specific view, it should be written as a UI agnostic, okay? So, so views versus view model, so it should not have any dependencies on Xamarin Forms view, uh, view model class. Uh, so, uh, so how you so so how you, you can control and activate events with selection. Proper, properties uh, could be included that will define visual behavior and also have some data triggers maybe other services, uh, like uh, we can have a selection, right? So it, if we have a selection that we wanted to bring data from the view model and also update the view model, we'll have to make sure it's marked a two-way two mode. Uh, by default, is one way, so you have to do uh, add... Um, Add that in your XAML or uh, code. So we don't really at this moment. This this will you don't have to have an event. You just it will just uh, use the use the uh, two-way binding. So here's another uh, with uh, selection versus activation the view model can default to, uh, to change selection based on the runtime decision. So, uh, so selected employee, it basically it will uh, raise property changed depending on the value set that we're setting on it. Um, all right, let's talk a little about tasks. And then we're going to look at some code. So, uh, so we have commands, uh, 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 UI command interface, and then uh, you know we're going to, like how we how we generalizing the command. The commands available in forms are already available for uh, for button, menu, toolbar, item, and text cell. Um, so uh, it it needs to be you know implemented. Uh, I command, uh, and then uh, once once the uh, in, so instead of <coughs> handling so like I, I was forgot to mention here, instead of handling events in the code behind. We don't want to have a code behind if you want to have a testable uh, view models, right? So instead of on click button on clicked and have a code and the code behind, you know, what we're trying to click, when we're using commands, that will allow us to bypass that in, from the view, and uh, it will just be in our uh, view model, not not code behind in the view, right? So, so, th so with commands uh, on button menu, that's mainly that's that's what I'm using. And if I need to write uh, another, that's that usually suffice. Uh, MVVM is very powerful with other patterns, uh, like dependency injection, uh, you know, factory or singleton. Uh, and commands, like I said, you know, uh, will still send messages. Uh, could be sent from the, usually on the error state and of view model, 
how do you communicate to that to view? So we use some messaging that will uh, that will bring message boxes with error codes that you could still wind back out of uh, the view model. Um, that's why it's just a design pattern. If you have to write so much code to avoid, you know, a couple lines in your code behind, just write some code behind and that's okay. It's not like a set of rules, you know, live or die for. It, it won't be testable, but you can find a way to test it otherwise. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so it's just, just to remember that it's a pattern and you can add any other uh, patterns that will, you know, that, that whatever for your task. Sometimes, uh, oh, I'm going to mention about testing. Uh, <laughs> this is cool. A couple of drones. Yeah, you wouldn't fly one of those without testing, right? Or app. You know, here's my app, and uh, yeah, did you test? No, nah, just ship it. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, I encourage you to test. And, uh, <laughs> and so with, that's why MVVM will help you write testable code. So NUnit and MS test. MS test, uh, is, uh, there's a couple more uh, testing frameworks, but uh, out of the, in Xamarin, uh, the Xamarin Studio, it's, uh, I think it's testing right with NUnit. Uh, in uh, Visual Studio, you can use either one. MS Test is right there, uh, integrated. Uh, but you have to remember when you're writing tests, it's not going to run this. You have to make sure they run in, in your platform. So, view model called, can be tested independently of the UI. And on depend, you know, on whatever, regardless on each platform. There are test runners there. You can actually run your view, uh, test, view test, view model tests on the device. Um, but before you're checking code in or anything like that, so you just run your uh, uh, t test like a, as a part of your check-in. If it fails, it's not going to allow check-in and stuff like that. So. Um, also, the um, Xamarin made available uh, UI testing tools that are, I, I haven't seen anybody else to have a such an integration like Test Cloud. Right now, even it's at a, another level that you can connect, you'll be able to get the um, error with like the core that was uh, crashed and to connect to the device that it crashed on through the, in the test cloud, if the device is available. So, so if your user has some very sophisticated crash, and uh, right now uh, Xamarin is, uh, uh, um, Xamarin is integrating with uh, Hockey App, so the Hockey, Hockey App will get, provide more t metrics and the uh, test environment for, uh, that you could actually upload stuff for Test Cloud. Uh, they have right now over a thousand devices in the Test Cloud that uh, are actually a hardware unlock, uh, not un they're not unlocked <coughs> devices that are uh, speci specially designed uh, rooms that can run those tests on the actual device. And I do encourage you to test on the device the emulator is just the emulator. That's why it is just to help us. But uh, once you start getting cycles closer to release, uh, we do test on actual devices. Uh, so uh, U UI test 1.0 that will run tests for you on the uh, in Xamarin Studio on the Mac. Uh, and then test recorder that helps you actually record your, uh, your tests. And uh, we started using it recently, finally, because, uh, you know, some of the QA testers were not testing it properly. Uh, and so now, actually, you can, you can uh, test. It, it takes some time to write, but once you write it, it just, you know, r runs. And maintain, you have to maintain the test. So the... the the interface, uh, it's, it's 1.0 UI test, 
but it, it actually can run. And then so that actually helps you to write the tests that will run in the cloud. So let's look about some pros and cons of MVVM. So, uh, and you, you have to decide for yourself. Of course, I'm talking about enterprise computing. If you're writing your app, your killer app that's going to make a million dollars, uh, you know, Fahrenheit to Celsius, yeah, <laughs> or something. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, app idea. I'm joking, and there are many people that actually succeeded just writing apps that sold uh, a lot of units, uh, uh, subscriptions. I know personally a couple guys that that's what they do. Uh, not that many, but, uh, but it's possible. Then you might not want to use MVVM and all the testing that it comes with. But for enterprise, when you're writing code reusable uh, code, there's more than two, three people on the project. Uh, you want to have maintainable, reusable code, uh, that, that is definitely a great choice. Uh, it will allow you separate the, uh, uh, address the separation of concern, concerns. Um, it, it provides binding infrastructure, great testability, and code reuse. Uh, it will reduce uh, convert a code that, to tie models to UI. So you don't have to have specific you know, storyboards or whatever you need to do at iOS and then Android uh, uh, designing and crafting the UIs and, uh, and if you choose to do Microsoft platform as well. So you have, and that's the code, you have one bug, now you have to troubleshoot all the three platforms, UI, you know, views. Here, it will allow you to um, you know, release code and uh, the big, big, uh, thing to attain, write once and uh, you know, run in many platforms. But it's getting very close to that, that place. And with, uh, with uh, native performance. Now, like I said, there's cons. And it will, you know, it will require, require infrastructure. There'll be multiple layers. Uh, bindings could be hard to debug, uh, especially from XAML code and, and stuff. There are ways around it right now, but it's still you know, something blows up. That was my biggest problem when I first looked into XAML. Like, okay, where do I go? There's no code. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, here, once you get over that, that's, that's actually, for me, it's no more any other choice for any uh, enterprise. That's why we start with. And uh, because it's always the main uh, concern is testability that helps your code being tested before the users. Now as we're getting into a test cloud testing, that also, you know, you're writing the code and it's just, um, uh, that's a requirement. So p part of that, that's how we use the MVVM for. Uh, so let's look at code demos. I'm gonna uh, show you the question and answer slide. I maybe come back to it. <laughs> and. Uh, and we have some giveaways too. So, so let's look at code. Uh, and let me know if you can see it. Okay. Hey. Back. There you go. Mouse. So let's. Uh, let's. So this is this is my weather apps. This is actually James Montemagno's app. And uh, let's look at first how it runs and see if I can run it on two platforms. So for, uh, for emulator, Xamarin had an emu emulator uh, for Android, and uh, I'm using Genie Motion. Um, there are other available. I think on the Windows, there's a really well-written Microsoft Android uh, emulator. So I'm going to run this app on two platforms here. Uh, hey. <laughs> Maybe. OK, so, <laughs> so, so it's just a weather app. It will, uh, by default, it will show us weather in Atlantic Beach. And uh, so we get weather, it goes to the weather service. My name is Siri. The current temperature in Atlantic Beach is 88 degrees Fahrenheit, with the high today of 88 degrees and the low of 88 degrees. 
and the forecast, it gives you a forecast, okay, it might be some, uh, it's still sunny. My name is Siri. The current temperature in the Yes, we know, sorry. There you go. So, so here uh, I, introduced, I showed you the, so speech to text and, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so the main entry to the app is here, app, app CS. And uh, we have a view, weather view model, weather view and uh, 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 forecast view. They're here, and then uh, we're going to present them in tab page. So that's the, that's the main uh, interface here. Just Siri quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that's, that's, you see both here. Um, I wish uh, we, uh, we're, um, we're using in our app a lot of uh, Fontello, uh, Font Awesome icons that we don't have to uh, create separate icons for different resolutions. Uh, the tab buttons don't, um, you can present them as a font, but toolbar bu buttons still take a bit uh, images, uh, PNG or, and uh, it, uh, we'd love to have that feature uh, implemented because of, uh, especially developers, we're not designers, <laughs> and you have, to, you have to bug the designers to get it. So, so, uh, uh, so here's some background color, the blue, and uh, text color white. And that's it for, uh, for the view. For the, so this is how the view is constructed for the tab page. And uh, let's uh, look inside the view model. Can you guys see it okay? I don't need to use that ma magnifying glass. <laughs> Let me test. <laughs> yeah, I, fortunately I grabbed my uh, backup glasses. I left my good glasses at home, but I, uh, that's why my magnifying glass just in case, too. Uh, so I have a weather service that, that will bring, that's, um, and then the view model inherits from, uh, uh, implements interface, I notify proper change. And uh, there is a, um, uh, uh, library called Foodie that, that could actually decorate the iProper Notify for you. Um, and it's quite handy as well. It, it keeps the view models cleaner or you can implement on models. Some people do that. I usually don't. I, stay, I usually keep the models clean and view model uh, it handles most of the bulk work. Uh, that's how it's, that's why it's really easy to uh, test later. Uh, so so we have some uh, city, and uh, so these are the properties. And uh, I can switch uh, from imperial to metric, and then uh, uh, temperature and such, the display. Uh, I have an I command implemented. So when I click that button, uh, that's on iOS. It's the, the new rendering of the button just with a text. And uh, that, the command actually, that helps me I, when somebody double clicks on the button. So, so this is, is busy, will just not allow you to you know, hit the web service twice and, uh, and such. So uh, uh, if I have a use GPS, I'm also here using this plugin, Cross Geolocator. So we're in Xamarin Forms code, right? So, so this. Uh, cross geolocator will actually go uh, for platform specific uh, uh, implementation and use and and uh, use the appropriate you know interface. You have to have permissions on Android turned on and 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 Windows Phone and iOS to use that. But it will go and get the GPS if it's available. If not, it just I'm just going to get the weather from the service, and then. Uh, this returns uh, weather route. So here I'm also doing some uh, um, conversion in units. Okay, so our oh this this is format just displaying, and uh, it's not convert. It bring it will bring me 
depending what weather. And um, I can display. And then I'm adding uh, integration for text to speech. So here's this plugin, and this is still in Xamarin Forms. We're not on Android or not on iOS. This is all uh, cross platform. And then, uh, then I make it speak. So, um, so let's look at the services. So, services I have uh, uh, hard coded strings with, uh, yeah, you have to have an app ID for the openweathermap.org. So, this, this basically just URI, I'm starting web client. Uh, like if just to get the weather and then deserializing using uh, JSON, uh, New Newton soft JSON library and that will give me this uh, weather route basically this these are my properties that uh, from the model and uh, this is really cool as well uh, most of the time your web API will have a low non camel case code so it's just a lowercase so this uh, uh, the Newton sauce has this JSON property that you could actually map properly to your properties without extra you know writing some kind of crazy code yeah underscores and so uh, so that's all for the code and uh, there's a helper method that has that uses settings plugin that will actually save the settings uh, for platform specific you know persistence like in on iOS I think it will actually sync with the cloud as well setting so when you come back it will have it which is which is a lot of code I had to write before that uh, on iOS do this on Android do this and uh, so let's see if we can run it real quick on Android <clears throat> All right. Uh, in a bigger Android view, this is the view model shrunk. Okay, come on. It was alive. We know it was alive. There we go. Okay, complete it. Let's see. Here you go. So this is uh, running on Android now. It will get the weather. Unable to get the weather because somebody cut off my internet for fun. That's okay. Well, and you, as you could see, there is a different uh, button rendering for the for the for the Android. Definitely, you have to test, make sure people can see your buttons. Some flavor of Android will flip the button colors, and uh, that's what the test UI will help you. Test Cloud will actually pick those uh, uh, differences. Uh, the biggest use from my herd is for, no, now it's because of the f device fragmentation on Android, that's, the, that's, that's how people love the Test Cloud. iOS is starting to get fragmented. All right, so unable to get the weather for Android. I'm glad that we were able to get iOS. But I wanted to actually see how the, uh, to show you the, the synthesizer uh, uh, speaking the weather in Android. Unable to get the weather. Okay, so this is it. Um, Okay, that's what I had for, uh, for today. Uh, there are different MVVM libraries that you could use. Uh, there is a fresh MVVM, very light uh, MVVM library. Uh, uh, I think he's using I, uh, tiny IOC for injection, and, but it's, uh, it has really well implemented navigation. If you need to swap pages, 
if you have uh, maybe like a wizards like we had uh, in, in one of our registration wizard or something like that for the phone on the phone uh, and you have maybe three or four screens that they go and then they have to go back all the way to the uh, start or to login you uh, you wanted to just go back to a root or maybe go to a certain page uh, this this helps you that that does that so uh, another you know MVVM cross is very well known MVVM light uh, used to be uh, it wasn't supporting Xamarin forms I think it's just uh, they released that it was supporting Xamarin forms reactive UI uh, caliber micro uh, I was looking at Exerin, that's uh, uh, one of the newer ones, that was really cool. And uh, you know, you can put your favorite right down there, you know, whatever, whatever you like to use. Uh, uh, definitely encourage you to plug in into your local Xamarin user group. Uh, that that kind of helps to uh, grow community, but also, you know, learn new topics and, and such. Um, we have a here if you don't have one you can start one and if you want to know how to, i can help you get started and and stuff